Hello everybody, welcome back to Language Litigation and Integration Part 109, Casual Conversations 41. Man, I went to bed way too early on the Oscars. I also recently learned that the Academy Awards are the Oscars. I'm not too hip to, to the names, but we'll be talking about the 2022 Academy Awards. Uh, the, the casting for G.I. Jane 2 is going pretty well. And more typical stuff for these types of episodes. We got talking points and other current events. And then some quotes from Washington, D.C. Just a couple small stories. Nothing super interesting on the stories. But first, just looking over the winners. Uh, I watched probably about half of them. I got to about 9.30 and it was about my bedtime. So, so I called it a night. Best Picture was won by Coda. Actress in a supporting role was won by Ariana DeBose of West Side Story. I liked that one. Gave that one a review. Actor in a supporting role, Coda was the winner. I've not seen that one at all. International feature film, Drive My Car was the winner. I have not seen that. Short documentary, The Queen of Basketball won. I have not seen that. Documentary feature, Summer of Soul was the winner. Best original song, no Time to Die, did not see that one. Animated feature film, On Canto, have not seen that one. Adapted screenplay, I'm not sure exactly what that means. Coda, the Coda's sweeping the floor. Original screenplay, Belfast, I really like that one. And that, that review of Belfast again got me kicked off of Reddit movies with again spoiler tags and everything. So, actor in a leading role, Will Smith, King Richard one. I liked, I liked King Richard. Actress in a leading role, The Eyes of Tammy Faye was the winner. I have not seen that. Best Director, Jane Campion, The Power of the Dog. I have not seen it. Production Design, Doom. Saw it, really liked it. Cinematography, Doom. Liked it. Costume Design, Cruella. Have not seen. Achievement in Sound, Doom. Animated Short Film, The Windshield Wiper. Live action short film, The Long Goodbye, have not seen either of those. Original score, Dune. Visual effects, Dune. Film editing, Dune. Makeup and hairstyling, The Eyes of Tammy Faye. So that was the complete list as of yahoonews.com. I also heard that Denzel Washington won his first Academy Award or Oscar. But the real, let's break down. I'm sure, if you get even if you live under a rock, I'm sure you saw Mama, the big homie, Will Smith, pulling up on Chris Rock. Smack! Bow! It was actually really aggressive like this. Bow! I'm sure you've seen the clip. Let's break that down. How would I handle that situation? Well, first of all, again, there was Chris Rock, comedian. Uh, Will Smith, front row at the Oscars. And then, exactly what did he say? He saw something about G.I. Jane uh, 2 being, being casted for the G.I. Jane 2. Uh, Will Smith's wife shaved her head because she's got some disease. I don't give a fuck. And Chris Rock makes the joke. Again, as we've all seen, Will Smith, at first he's laughing. He looks over at Jada. She's not laughing. And then so he just, he like walks up all swaggy like right up to Chris Rock. Chris Rock is just staring at him like, what's, this, what's about to happen here? Will Smith just winds up, aggressively slaps him. Not just a little love tappy, but like, like I would hit, but like slap, but it was aggressive. It was definitely fucking aggressive. And then Kevin Hart's just like, oh, well, well uh, Will Smith just smacked the shit out of me. <laughs> Will Smith goes back and sits down, and then he was like, come on, it was a joke. And then, keep my wife's name out of your fucking mouth. Again, I just watched the Joe Rogan clip, and his lip was quivering. Keep my wife's name out of your fucking mouth. If you want to go for a screaming con contest, well, I'll take you up on that. But how would I approach this whole situation? Um, if I was Will Smith, would a joke about my woman to that capacity it result in physical violence at any point? No. The only time... The white knight should a man step in or a partner step in for a partner in any scenario Just just because of physicality somebody's bigger than somebody else and it's an actual physical threat sure But even like man woman 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 man man in like a verbal disagreement without any real potential for violence Just let them duke it out themselves. 
I had a girlfriend, which again, still that would never happen. But if I had a girlfriend and she was just in, again, in a, in a verbal disagreement, clearly where it's not like escalating to violence, I would not step in and try to be a white knight in any way. Someone aggressively trying to physically assault somebody that I care about around me, uh, I'd probably defend them or, or, or step up then. But if I was Chris Rock, that would have just been on site, you smack me like that, it's, it's on. Fuck, fuck everything. So I saw that on Reddit, totally agree. <laughs> but yeah, you smack like that, that's, that's initiation of violence. So I would absolutely defend myself past that. If I was Will Smith, again, just a edgy, arrogant celebrity, and then after he wins the best actor for King Richard, and he's up there crying, I'm such a, I'm just, I'm just such a passionate person. So now nah, you're an insulated celebrity, and, and your emotions got the best of you. Well, if I was Chris Rock, again, it would have been on site, absolutely would have thrown fists back, then I would have pressed charges, absolutely, 100 fucking percent. So, if I was Chris Rock, it'd be, it'd be fuck Will Smith, that'd be, that'd be beef, that would not be, we would not be squashing that beef until you get thrown in fucking prison. <laughs> but, again, would not have, would obviously would not have done what Will Smith had done, even, even with jokes at all, again, even if my wife was not happy, I would still probably chuckle and be like, well, I wanted to marry a woman that couldn't take a fucking joke, even if it's about a disease. I don't know if you guys have seen people with actual diseases, well, she has an actual disease, but like, I don't know how life-threatening uh, uh, the, the whatever she has. But people actually make fun of themselves, so it's like you can't take a joke whether you're literally dying. You know, one of the one of the YouTubers like I don't really follow, but I've seen several videos. He's got like a bunch of degenerative diseases like cancer. I saw a video of him like you know literally like 15 minutes making fun of himself for it. He like almost had to get his arm amputated because of how bad his diseases were. Doesn't give a shit at all. Just making fun. Life's life's too short. Life's short. Have fun. So not the inability to take a joke from anybody in this perspective is just even if it's way more aggressive. Than joke. Just come back and rip them harder. I mean, if they threaten you, you defend yourself. If they make fun of you, make fun of them more. Raise the disrespect level a little bit, not go physically assault somebody. 100% assault. I would have pressed charges. I would have thrown fists back if I was Chris Rock. I would, I would have, if I was the Academy Awards, I would have thrown out uh, Will Smith for sure. Or just, uh, again, I don't know, I don't know. If take the, I don't know, just, just be completely objective. Does it f affect the, the King Richard movie nomination? I don't really think so, but I would not like let him uh, like accept it on, on stage. I would, I would throw him out of the venue for sure. So, <laughs> and if we had, again, uh, for, the, for the casting of G.I. Jane 2, would Jada Pinkett Smith make a good drill sergeant? Now nah, she'd make a good sergeant that got drilled by the cadets. Come on, come on. <laughs> So, so, but again, I did not see the, the drama live. Again, the finish up the last episode, so I was going to go watch the Oscars. At 9.30, rolled around, and I was about past my bedtime. So, that's, that's all I have to say for that. But, uh, ge genuinely funny, fucking hilarious drama. But, other thing from the, now just more random talking points. Uh, from Sean Penn was furious Volodymyr Zelensky was not speaking at the Oscars. Get just weirdest shit ever. Like you guys are aware, again, for like the 50th video in a row, education limits violence. Are you promoting the education? Are you promoting scientific proof? Are you promoting your own laws? No, then you are supporting violence, right? You, Ukraine, they have, they have universities there, right? They have teachers there aware of, of, uh, of this proof that is going to change the sentiment of the entire species, right? And so it's kind of like treason against their own people, kind of abandon their own people, which is the weirdest shit ever. Again, like the, immediately flashed the clip of Eric Weinstein on Lex Friedman's podcast and Lex is like, you know, maybe we should and Eric thinks he's, he's about to say disclose Brad's proof because it's legally obligated and Eric was like, oh no, we'll go to jail and again, biggest fucking pathetic coward, fucking shit all over his face, weird fuck Eric Weinstein but now imagine being a cr Ukrainian and like, your government's like, you can't publish this math paper, but you can die like, like actually, they're actually like dead, they're like, they're gone they're fucking dead. So I, I can't imagine being a, a, a Ukrainian uh, professor and not publishing this fucking paper. I, I don't get it. The one way we can change the sentiment of the people is to change everybody. We can change everybody if something goes viral. Once something goes viral, it's in the public consciousness within fucking seconds, minutes, or days. So, if you don't support science, you support war. But Sean Penn being furious at Volodymyr Zelensky was not speaking at the Oscars. Again, it, it, people just like heroes. I mean, he was the president when Vladimir Putin did some dumb fucking shit, and now, now, 
needs to be nominated. I saw a bunch of other people nominate him for, for a Nobel Peace Prize. Yeah, he did so much for his, his country's peace by supporting scientific research, which would absolutely... People want to change the sentiment of the Russian people. The average Russian who watches TV doesn't give a shit that much. The way you change that is his friend. Oh, did you hear about this, this Brad guy over in America that did some science proof? Then they look into it themselves, and their minds expand, and they grow, and they learn. So again, it, it, it's not been fun and games at any point. It's been direct violation of international law the entire time. But now when you have a war, you guys all caused it. You all supported it. You all complicit in providing for it to happen. For real. 100%. So no, Volodymyr Zelensky does not need to be at the Oscars, nor does he need to be winning a Nobel Peace Prize. Everyone needs to look in the mirror and realize how much, how much fucking death and suffering that caused, because they have no values and they feel responsibility for nothing. Joe Biden says Vladimir Putin, and I quote, for God's sake, this man can't stay in power. Um, ex escalation as a diplomat or head of state should never be an objective. Like, it should never, you should never do that. Do I think that statement is, is, is escalatory? In general, not really. Again, Joe Biden would have more briefing and communication with Vladimir Putin than any reporter or any person at the White House questioning him. So, with, with personal interactions, you, you would know what, what, what the other person would, would strike him as, as escalatory. So, from the context that I am aware of, I, I don't necessarily that as escalation. Escalation as a diplomat or head of state should always never be a thing. Again, yeah, again, like, to learn from the Russians, guys. Do they say, oh, oh, we're going to go push this reporter out of a window. Oh, we're going to go Nova shot somebody. No. So, again, if you're really about it, you don't, you don't need to talk about anything. And, and publicly, it, it, it could only be net negative to escalate somebody else. Macron said, I wouldn't use those words. I, I agree. That's a paraphrase from me. But how does this, this affect the average Russian viewpoint of the war? And again, meaning, do I think an average Russian would hear that and say, you know, you, uh, uh, this Joe Biden is attacking our great leader, Vladimir? I think some would. So again, the thing we need to change is sentiment of the human population. The way we do that is education. We can't change education until people enforce the law. Everyone who, who could enforce the law won't. Every single fucking person is culpable. Every single fucking one. Virality changes sentiment. Something goes crazy, and then people say, hey, have you heard this? Hey, have you watched that? And they go look into it themselves, and then their mind expands. That is how people learn. That is how society grows. But if we stagnate the entire population, well, we can go watch the Oscars. G.I. Jane 2 is looking good. <laughs> Biden does not walk back any statements about Putin. Again, this is coming in the past couple of days. This is over the past week. But again, that, to me, that's just the, the intelligence of the United States saying that's not, Putin would not ex take that as uh, escalatory. The average Russian may, may be sway one person one way or another. Virality changes sentiment. Everybody fucking changes. The Russians changed the war strategy. They failed to take Kyiv. And I've seen, again, it's K-Y-I-V. Right? I've seen it spelled, I don't know if it's a different city, but I've seen it spelled K-I-E-V. That's where I think people get Kiev. But it'd be Kiev if that was a thing, but it's Eve, Kiev. So, just clarity, because I brought that up in this lecture series and I did not know. But, and who knows, who, what a surprise. And again, I say I'm not a war expert, so that when I said, you know, I didn't think it would be a long thing, I strictly meant the, the, the forces of Russia were way bigger. But, you know, like, I don't know, like the roads, the, the, the topography, the ge ge geography, this, that. So, again, who, what a surprise. People fought fought to control their city. What a surprise, Vlad. What a big fucking surprise, big guy. What a shocker. And so, my, again, as a not war strategist, uh, limited knowledge, I, I, I hope there should be some ceasefire soon. Because again, this is the beginning of human history and everybody's on the wrong side of it. Each day that goes on is a new case. That is not a fucking joke in any fucking way. But again, I still don't have constitutional rights. I literally do not have constitutional rights. But anything else on the war, on the progress of the war? Again, I don't know much. Don't just just stop. Just stop killing each other. Biden's tax. I'm trying to. They're all over the place. I'm trying to get the war ones if there's any more. That that's it for the for the war conversation. Biden's tax changes. 
for net worth at a hundred more than a hundred million net worth. Um, again, I didn't see the actual what the actual proposal was, but I just have tax on un unrealized gains makes no sense for anybody, and I've already talked about that. But unrealized gains, whether it's one penny or hundred trillion, quadrillion, sixty nine million dollars, does not make sense. Tax on wealthy people on income, not on realized gains or uh, uh, non transacted assets. It's fine by me. Again, if I was making cash flow 100 million a year and I had to drop that down to 60 million and pay 40 million in taxes, I wouldn't be too bummed. So, but it just doesn't it doesn't make economic sense to tax unrealized gains in any, any tax transactions. Um, Rob DeSantis signs the don't say or the don't say gay bill for K through three without parental consent. What should be taught about sex in school? Simply the mechanics, <laughs> no, I guess not the mechanics. Well, let's, let's consider that. Maybe doggy style, missionary, reverse cowgirl, 69ing. Maybe we should teach like, the, bio the actual biology of it, the anatomy, the biology, what happens, the psychology. You know, I wouldn't know, I'm a super virgin. But again, are boobs and vaginas real? And I've seen them on the internet, but I'm not exactly sure if those are real out in the wild anywhere. So this could, this could be science fiction. <laughs> but well, teaching sex in school, just for anybody, um, again, just like the consequences, but not in a fearful way. Like when we were in school, it's like, here's the blue waffle. Any, any great scholar would know what the blue waffle is. But we'll just show you some like herpes that has gone un, un, untreated for like six years. It's like, you get one blowjob, that's what happens. It's like, so no, I would not, not, not a fear based, but just consequences of contraceptives. You safe sex, stuff like that, but that, that's probably about it for, for pretty much about anybody. Again, I completely support not again indoctrination of sexual activity for anybody. I just don't even. But again, I don't think you can really indoctrinate people that well. No, but I hope, totally, totally agree with that. But again, let's let's con consider the, the reverse because I said the don't say fag bill before, but it would be the do say fag bill. So instead of, because again, a lot of times I'm just reacting to the, the tag phrase. I don't even know, you know, what political party this is coming from and what the sentiment of the statement's supposed to be. But don't say fag bill, meaning, do, you know, don't say, don't say gay around K through three. Then at the Oscars, the, we had all three of the co-hosts going gay, 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 fag, 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 fag. So let's consider the reverse. Maybe let's take actual K through th third graders who actually, again, they're, they, they don't have puberty. But we should call them faggots and then see how they react. If they get really offended and upset, they might be more likely to transition when they're not actually transitioning or they're just reacting to social sentiment. If they don't get offended by being called faggot, then maybe, and they're actual homosexual, well then, then they're actually real homosexuals because you wouldn't care. Just in the same way if someone called a straight person a faggot, they wouldn't actually think they're gay. So. The, the, the don't say gay bill is we should introduce another bill called the do say fag bill where we go around calling young children faggots and just see how they react. I know that, that could work out pretty well <laughs> but I, I totally agree with the with the bill. I, I heard Ben Shapiro read it, I heard nothing nothing of any concern. Now that I'm using Rob DeSantis as a as a example because his policies on COVID are completely fucking wrong completely fucking wrong, completely nonsense completely pathetic and stupid and all the dumb shit. But, but again, this is just the hypocrisy. This is, this is experience and growing up. There, we're learning, learning about individuality and consent and parents matter and society matters, some and laws matter, but then we go right into biological health, health which is sex is still biological, and we go, then we go into COVID, and now we just flip, our, we flip the script and we just do dumb shit again. So a great, a great, another great example of profound hypocrisy. And Walt Disney made a statement about being about having the law being repealed. Again, K through third graders are not sexual in nature in any fucking way. In any pressure for anything, straight, homosexual, anal, oral, 69ing, all the different positions would just, per, again, people, uh, your, your K through third grader, they're going to go up and they're going to be exploring sexuality themselves. So just, just facilitate that in a healthy, meaningful way. But Walt Disney making a statement about the law being repealed, I think that's just, just bad. Bad, bad job, Walt Disney. Bad for your business. 
bad for your public look. But again, like I said, I'll, I'll say I'll say these things. People say, oh, he's on the left. Oh, he's on the right. And because uh, I'm just I'm on the team that wants to get paid my money and leave this 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 country and never look at this shit ever again. So that's the team I'm on again for like the fifteen thousand time reminder. Last thing, and then a couple just quick stories. Jordan Peterson and the Antifa cliff clip. There's some recent clip of uh, Jordan Peterson getting asked about what Antifa is, and his exact uh, paraphrasing, but it was like, it's it's an act against God, or it's going, it's it's revenge for God for the the torment of being or something. And then he starts crying. Jordan Peterson is one benzo away from being a complete fucking lunatic, complete one. Oh, it's an act of revenge against God. Nope, nope, still still historically, God was a person. He, he proved ontology. A bunch of stupid people came after him and tried to prove things. And then, and then, oh, no, oh, oh, God. Dear God, who's dead and not a person that's alive anymore, please shoot me. Please send the power of the Holy Spirit through your son, Jesus Christ, to execute me. Jesus on the cross, forgive them. They know not what they do. No, nah, fuck everybody. Kill everybody. Please end this shit. <laughs> so, now they're absolutely wonderful, weird clip from Jordan Peterson. Now just a couple quotes from Washington, D.C. So just again, another I uploaded the video of the Arlington National Cemetery. Again, thoroughly had a good time with all of my family members. But again, just some more quotes about, again, being a scapegoat and why it sucks so fucking much. Because... <laughs> Because again, I told you the, the wonderful Christmas interaction. But I saw saw all of the, everyone involved there. Had had a fine interaction with them. My uncle shook my hand. But <laughs> we go. So we, again, we land. We land in uh, Washington D.C. Again, just there for you know uh, literally a day. Fly in one day, fly out the next day for the service and and a lunch. But. <laughs> We go, and so we all, we all have our own rooms, and we're all, you know, the whole family's kind of congregating in Grandma's room. And so we're all, we're all sitting up there, and again, the, the, again because my, my family, they're, they're certainly, sl like, slightly on the right. Like, not, not Trump flags everywhere, or this or that, but they're probably slightly on the right. Like, they're not anti-vax, they wear their mask, they don't, there might be, like, one slight comment over here. But, but it's not like, they're not like defiant in any fucking way. And so just slight, slightly on the right, certainly on the right, but not like no, nowhere close to like aggressive or like, you know, defiant or, or anything. And again, I would rip on my own family if they were, happily and proudly. <laughs> but, so they're, 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 they're more like, again, just for an example, we're all, we're all up in grandma's room, and my, and my uncle from Christmas, you know, the, the Fox News is on, and they're talking about Katanji Brown. And he literally just goes, you know, Katanji Brown, who is that? And then, again, I'm, I'm sitting in the room, we have probably, my, my uncle and his wife, they have probably, they have four kids, three, three sons and a daughter. Daughter was the only one not there. And this is probably the first time I've seen like most of my family members in, in quite, a, quite a long time. And, you know, they all have, they all have kids. I mean, the, the youngest, his youngest son is my age, literally my age. I'm, Pretty sure he's like six days younger than me. I'm September 10th. I'm pretty sure he's September 16th. But but grown he has grown children and grand grandchildren. All of them have kids, grandkids as well. Or his kids have kids. His grandkids. But so we're all sitting up in this room, and he just you know goes, "Who's Katanji Brown? Who's that?" And again, in a way, looking for a response. And I don't respond at all. You have to say I don't engage the politics. Like I can't follow it. One plus three up brown left circle. What do you think? You didn't heard words, no idea what you're talking about. We can do biology, we can do history, we can do physics. But again, you unified the natural sciences six years ago. No one's asked me a direct question about it. <laughs> not not once. Literally not once. And when they do, I'm not gonna respond. You can't you can't randomly engage my mathematical capacity. And when you want to learn about fundamental science, yeah, well, shops closed, bummer. But he just he just blurts out, you know. Who, who's that? And, and then, then you can hear him saying something, well, let's just see if he responds. Like, I, I assume he's talking about me. And again, I'm not engaged in the conversation in any way. Again, my mom's sitting here. It's a pretty nice hotel room. It's got like a little little lobby area, a little living, living room, the embassy suites. But probably, you know, 15, 20 people in the room. And again, 
when, when he first when he first came in the room, came over to me, said, "Hey, you know, shook my hand." They don't they don't do it in a, like a trying to be condescending way. They literally want to see if someone blurts out some other talking point to refute. Again, basically like soft level gaslighting one another to see some inconsistency to like jump on that and laugh really loud. And so again, it's like everyone knows somebody who has a one all they have is one liner jokes. You'll, you'll go through a whole conversation and say one a one liner joke and you're like, sweet, that's what you got out of it, sweet. And so again, that's that's their level of political involvement. More of like watching Fox News and then saying, you know, who's that Democrat on the who's well look how look how big of an idiot that person is. Like all political conversation goes. And so, but he's like, you know, let's see if he says anything about Katanji Brown. And, and the only thing I said was how to spell her name. Because as we've seen in this lecture series, I am super respectful. The last episode, I only called her the N-word three times. So yeah, but again, like I said, just because, and again, from the Christmas interaction, they don't, they're not coming from anywhere. They don't know my positions. I posted 175 scientific lectures. And then what, my, the only thing, again, doesn't make me mad. This interaction did not make me mad at all. The thing that makes me mad is like threatening or disrespecting my research to a pro pro profound and extensive level, right? That Jesus and God son. That's a historical proof. No different than one plus one equals two. You know, it's just society can't accept what life is, so it's fuck bread. But it really, like, like, like I'm going to come out and defend like liberalism. Like I'm going to defend the Democratic Party. <laughs> and I'm just like, again, it doesn't make me mad, it doesn't make me upset. But again, it's just like, why don't you just interact with somebody directly? Ask them a direct question. Sit down and watch one of my videos and learn my positions. Because it's just like anybody else. And the amazing thing is that the only way this is still possible is because you won't publish my paper. If I was actually famous or public with my research, they wouldn't do these things. Because it's, it's not overtly, it's not condescending. It's condescending, I respond, I don't give a fuck who's around, don't care at all. But it's not really condescending. It's more of like trying to have a conversation and this is how they do. They blurt out stuff and see who reacts to what. And then, even at one point, my mom was like, I'm going to get out of the room if it gets contentious. And I'm not, I don't bring the emotion. I'm more mature. I can have in-depth conversations about anything. Past that, I can prove things to anybody that will listen. I can prove anything to anybody if they will listen. If they can't, I, I, if they don't listen, I can't. And so, again, it was, again not a bad interaction, not, not nothing close to Christmas, not disrespectful in any way. But it's not a conversation. It's not actually interacting with one another. And again, for like I don't do politics, but if you don't want to spend one minute of your time learning about the things that I've proven, I don't even care if you like don't disrespect my research. I don't have a conversation with you about something that you haven't taken my time any amount of time, and I've lectured for hundreds and hundreds of hours on the internet. Well, well then I'm not gonna like respond, and I don't care. Like, I don't do politics. I'm there to enjoy time with my family. And again, when you're more mature around less mature people, it is always being around screaming children, always. Except they can control your money sometimes. And disrespect you more. So that's always fun. One other, just one other couple quotes. So we're gonna, now we're down, we're down in the, uh, in just the lobby of the hotel, get some free drinks, and you, you know, like a little, little bar, you can get some burgers or quesadilla or whatever. It, it's, mo it's a lot of our family down there, me, my brother, my dad, the, the three sons uh, of my uncle, and their wives. And then my brother and my dad, go up to go out there's a couple places to walk to go get food they walk to go get food now I'm sitting there with my cousins having a good conversation just cutting shit up whatever and one of one of my again my the the youngest the youngest uh, son who's, who's like I said literally my age and he's got he's been married for probably don't know how long he's been married probably four five six years he's got two kids not exactly sure how old but probably like two and five two and four and so, and he asked me again, a totally not disrespectful way. I love this question. Brad, what, what do you do? What do I do? That's a great question. I unified the natural sciences six years ago. Every time people speak inefficiency, I can logically fill in their arguments. 100% of the time. Don't care to talk about it. I'm trying, my, my human rights are violated. I post about it literally every single day. I lecture every single night, and I email people every single day. Most of the day. Throughout the day. It's all illegal. My constitutional rights are currently violated. So I try to resolve that. That is really what I try to do. But the question is, again, no one's ever going to support my research. The question is, what do you do to make money? Which, again, I just cleared, doing my taxes now, I'm getting writing all of it off as genuine expenses because these videos take time. I have to sit down and plan all these things. I have to watch podcasts for hours upon hours upon hours upon hours. But 
So again, I had my investment payout, but again, like the, the Bitcoin payout, and then I tell them, you know, I have this bar and restaurant, and then the alcohol company. And so like that's that's my that's my narrative life. But what do you do? Those are the, those are the things I can talk about that don't generate some sort of weird doubt, denial, disrespect to my life's research, which is proven on the internet yesterday, six years ago. But it's just like, and in, 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 again, in a genuinely not disrespectful way. But what I'm trying to do is resolve the, the violations of ongoing criminal activity and start a family. Like, and again, this is coming from a cousin, literally my age, with a wife and two kids. What do I do? I try to start a family, and I try not to get disrespected about things that have been on the internet for six years because people won't look into them. And by look into them, I mean accept a million dollar cash offer to let me give a lecture at any reputable university or give a musical performance at any reputable venue with property marketing, proper marketing, or promotion. But it's just such a weird question getting what do you do when, again, all of these people have kids going to schools where their school districts are stealing my research behind closed doors, distributing it to their teachers, and then they're not a part of that, and then what do I do? I just try not to get disrespected. I actually try, try to have an interaction with another human being that isn't purely disrespectful. And again, it, this wasn't an dis disrespectful interaction with my uncle or my cousin. But again, this is like even talking about the alcohol company. Again, I haven't like done day to like day, day on any of that shit in literally years. But it's just like I've put out videos on this stuff about, you know, like why the science, oh, another thing that happened was, because I told you the story, this is the, one of the sons is the, uh, is the one with glaucoma, or with, with deteriorating eyes. He says his eyes going well, he's just got some uh, uh, drop, eye drops, and his eyes have not deteriorated in any way. Good. But his wife makes this comment like, yeah, not in a disrespectful way, but in like a, ha ha, remember when you did this weird thing kind of way. It was like, you know, she, she kind of asked her husband, but not, again, not in a, like a, a subtle way, not in a disrespectful way, where I can, I can hear her asking, and she's like, you know, was it Brian or Brad, Brian's my brother, Brian or Brad who, who sent you the, the, about the cannabis thing for the glaucoma? And again, again I, I, my emotional intelligence, my understanding of where people are coming from with questions, again, I'm not looking for, like, controversy at any point in time. And... and the way, the way my cousins are, again, it's more of just like again, blurting out one-liners to try to like see who's inconsistent where. And she makes this comment about, again, not in a rude, disrespectful way. And then I just, like, again, I just avert my eyes and just like, not actually, I don't hear it, but just don't even respond. Like literally in person, just don't respond. Because you can tell it's going to be like, yeah, that cannabis thing that definitively lowers blood pressure. The thing for glaucoma that makes you go blind is increased blood pressure behind your eyeballs. Cannabis bona fide lowers your blood pressure. And so, but it's like we're gonna like laugh and joke about when I offered actual medical advice, which is correct and valid, and being criminally withheld from public knowledge, pursuant to Article 1, Section 8, Subsection 7 of the United States Constitution, and the Fifth Amendment, and the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. But, it, and so it's like, again that's, again, that's getting into more of the disrespecting of stuff I've proven. But like any medical doctor, I don't care if you take my advice. I'm gonna give you the best medical advice I can give you, and if you don't take it, it's not like I'm gonna like tear you down and make fun of you. But conversely, without publication, the, the reverse happens. People mock actual health advice because people simply won't publish it. So again, not 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 in any way to detract from you know, it wasn't a bad interaction or disrespectful in any way. Again, these are just quotes that stick out in my head. They just stick out. It's just like if people would again, if sentiment would change. They would become interested. They might not watch every video, they might, they'd watch one or two, and they would hear a fear, a proof, and then they'd think about that, and then they would grow, and they would change. And again, I'm coming from a position where, again, the, and, and even at the time, because again, like my, and then my uncle, my, again, my, my dad takes CBD for, for, for health reasons, and my uncle is now taking uh, CBD, it's the same uncle. So, again, we are literally benefiting from my health advice while disrespecting the proof that brought you that advice. And so when people say sports are good and help people learn, they teach people to compete over nothing. And now we are dealing with the consequences of competing over nothing over 20 years. So those are the only, the only real uh, uh, quotes from Washington, D.C. Again, just stuff that just sticks in my head where it's like, this is immaturity. This is stuff that people are going to disrespect me until publication. And it's been six years. Post about it every day, lecture every single night. So, 
Who knows if this shit will ever change? I really don't think it will. I have no expectation to ever live to see the day this world changes. Because it could have changed six years ago. You just have to, like, do something. Now the shit is piled up so high, people just don't want to take responsibility. Grown-ass adults that cannot take responsibility for any part of their life. So, thank you for watching Language Litigation Integration Part 109, Casual Conversations 41. You gotta probably you got a music piece done, so I'll probably drop that tomorrow. See you soon.